Hey folks, welcome to our channel. Family friendly bushcraft. If you want to see different content, put it in the comments below. But make sure you hit that bell for notifications. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit like. Okay folks, as you can see we've got some nice cast iron cooking gear out there. We're going to cook up some stuff we foraged today from one of the local nature reserve areas. We've got some puffball mushrooms, nettles, plantains, hazel leaves, the nice young light green ones, you know, that with a nice nutty taste. What we're going to do, we're going to cut these spuds up nice and small. We're going to boil them almost to the point where they're falling apart. We're going to then mix in the foraged greens. We're going to mix in some butter with that, a decent amount of butter to get a good lot of flavour going. Then what we're going to do, we're going to cut some lard onto bacon, cook them up in a nice cast iron frying pan along with the chopped up puffball mushrooms, get some nice colour on that, mix it in with the, the spuds, the butter and the greens and then we're going to have a nice little feast. This is just done in the back garden today but this is something that we would do any semi-permanent camp or after a foraging session so I hope you enjoy it. Let me know any feedback you've got. Puffball mushrooms, these are edible. I just want to clean them up a little bit. You don't need too much doing with them, just take the mucky bottom off. As you can see, they've got a nice colour, no sign of gills or anything like that. Smell like mushrooms. Oh, it smells lovely. Now, I'm not a big fan. So there's some discoloration in there so I'm going to discard that because I'm not that good with fungus. So although these are probably perfectly alright, all of that bit's discoloured. Can we see? Mm. That discoloration there means I'm not going to take any chances. There's no real point taking risks you don't need to take. Tyson, can you get some more bits of stick on the fire please? So again, I'm just going to keep cleaning these up. And I'm going to wash them down in a minute, just get the majority of the muck off. A couple of these we picked yesterday, a couple from today. See now that one's black inside, that's past using to me, that's getting ready to spore and to breed the next generation of fungus, so we won't be eating that one. Oh that's nasty. No it's not nasty mate, it's just the stage beyond where we need it. They're all ready for rinsing off, I will come back to them very shortly. It's a Dutch oven, standard as any. Can't remember if this is seven litre or eight litre. One of my little finds on Amazon. I'm just gonna roughly chop the taters. Pop them in there. I'm not worried about a bit of soil on them, a bit of dirt. All that will come off in the boiling. So what we want is reasonably bite sized chunks. Another way of doing potatoes around a cat fire that I really do like is wrapping them in tin foil and sticking them in the embers. Real traditional camp out baked potato. Don't even need butter with them they taste that nice but I always put a bit through anyway because that's that's just the way I roll. A little bit of dirt off the potatoes but it doesn't hurt anybody. Now our, our glorious technical water carrier, no expense spent, I mean spared. There we go, just enough water just to keep the, so they're just breaking through it a little bit, so we're not going to spend all day boiling this water. Now I'm just going to pop this back down by the fire. What we want. Oh, 
Oh my god, why it follows me. That. that is as the sap boils inside the bud because some of this is old Christmas trees that have been cut up you know ones that didn't sell last year more of the hardwood and fruit trees. The harder woods are where the better ember comes from. Okay so I've got the old little special heat proof gl glove. A mild shebag, it's not exactly winter time yet but you know needs must and all that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drain these tights. There won't be a lot of fluid left in them. There we go. I just want to let them steam for a couple of seconds. So now they've steamed for a couple of seconds, I'm going to throw in a blob of butter. Technical measurements. A bit more, why not? We're not in some kind of health food kick. Use a lot of calories when you're out messing about. See these plantains? Yeah, that's all usable stuff. Normally I boil that down as a cabbage. But we've got some nice bits of dandelion. Just roughly broken down. Bits of stinging nettle, a couple of little hazel leaves. The hazel leaf just ripped up nice and gently. If you're using hazel leaves this time of year, it is August. You want to be using the lighter coloured newer leaves, not the darker coloured older leaves. They're a much stronger taste in the darker ones. Had more time for the tannin to build up. Love nettles, really nutritious, loads of vitamins in them, loads of iron. More iron than spinach, they say. Don't they sting you? Eh? Don't they sting you? Well, if you're careful when you're picking them and you've got a bit of confidence, no. And then, again, the heat of the cooking kills any sting that's left. I'm going to put this bit in there so it's fit to go in with all this. To who? To James, yeah. the builder, the kitchen. Yeah, thank you. And also Nam's back. Hey? Nam's back. Okay, good. Right. Yeah, yeah. All of that going in there like that. So we've got a little bit of the fat left as well. So I'm going to use that right. So all we're going to do with that is mix it all in. Do I chop it up a wee bit with the spatula? It's never a problem. Just makes it easier on the eating. Right, we're going to put the lid back on that, keep the heat in, keep that nice and warm while we sort out the side dish. Established. 
There's those Roman berries with a little bit of sugar, a little bit of water in with them as well, just sizzling down, breaking down nicely. Just leaving them to reduce till the fluid level goes down by about half. At which point we should be ready to serve. Now my measurements are always quite rustic. I, I'd go by the tip it in the slack handful and the that bit'll do approach. I might put a little bit of butter in there with it as well just to give it that richness. We'll see in a minute. Here we go. That's been kept nice and hot and it smells. Well, get a load of that. You want to be jealous you're on that side of the camera at the minute. I'm jealous. Oh, I can smell it from here. Yeah? I'm jealous. Good stuff, yeah, it smells good. Right, so what we're going to do is... Tyson, can you pass me that glove, please? Thank you, buddy. So, we are going to tip the Dutch oven out. Look at that. Whoa. That is a plate of awesomeness, that is. That will keep you going, whether you're in the bush, whether you're just playing about in the back garden like we're doing, doesn't matter. So, if you keep the camera still, mate, what else we have is our reduction of rowan berries with a little bit of sugar, they've had some water in with it, you can see how gloopy that's gone. What no, have you no. made? Say again? What have you made? That's what I'm just talking about, buddy. Oh. So we've had the rowan berries in there, we've let them caramelise a little bit, we've put a bit of sugar in with them. Let them caramelise a bit more and we've done that a couple of times. After that we've put a bit of water in with it, let it reduce down a little bit. Just for a bit of added flavour, a little bit of sweetness to go with the saltiness of the bacon, the tartness of the rowing berries themselves. Oh, that's for winners. A little bit of butter in there as well to give it a bit, a bit, a little bit of richness. Really is nice, isn't it? You can go all day on that, that's blooming gorgeous. All right, boys. Yeah. So you got the rowing berries in there. Yep. There's your spork. There's your spork. Conan, you can have one in a sec. These sports came from the GMB, NHS 15%. Let the government stick that 1% right where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Dig in, boys. I have mine later because I don't feel hungry. Okay, mate. Marvellous. Oh, wow, that's good. What do you reckon? It's great. If you're enjoying the content so far, please do hit that like button because every press we get really does help us out. Thanks very much. Now, there's an old saying in cooking, when it's brown it's done, when it's black it's buggered. I think I may have missed that chapter, but never mind. I like dampers a little bit. Isn't it what the chefs call them, caramelised? Anyway, while our backs were turned, the, the fire kicked in to overdrive a little bit. Now, we're trying to do it a couple of different ways, just to see what works. As we can see, that's a little bit outwardly done. And the stuff in the coals, that looks nice. That's like it's been done in a Dutch oven. Look at that, that's nice. That's a nice crumb there. Still nice and moist in the middle. Still crumbing apart quite nicely, so it is cooked. Let's give it a go, shall we? Oh, that's a bit heavy. Whoa. Yeah, look at that. That is really nice. Whoa. That is really good. Quite often I carry jam or something like that when you're doing dampers, but this doesn't need it. I'll just have a little bit of butter. Whoa. That is awesome. If you've enjoyed watching today's content as much as we've enjoyed making it, 
please do hit subscribe, press like, ring that bell for notifications and leave any comments below. We'll do our best to answer any questions that are posted within the first couple of days of posting. All the best for now and see you in the next video.